Welcome, dear viewers, to a new episode of Dialogue Horizon. In this episode, we will continue what we started three weeks ago on the economic issue, the deterioration of the economic economy of the country, which is is, is leading to 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 a dreadful dreadful uh, catastrophe if not uh, repaired quickly or salvaged quickly, because now the rate the speed at which the deterioration is going, it definitely it will end up with a collapse. Till this moment, we did not read the collapse point. When we read the collapse point, everything will, will, will vanish, Safe, safety, security, everything. So that's why we are continuing on this issue. And now, in this episode, I'm happy to host one of our friends. He is an economist and he is a, uh, also an activist and he's a politician. But after all, he's an economist. Uh, who can tell us exactly about the gravity and the, 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 the danger of the, 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 the downhill, downhill uh, trend of, of the economy. Uh, it is, uh, he is his doctor, associate professor actually, uh, Samani Hanun. Uh, he worked in different universities and he added and he contributed in many forums, economic forums. Welcome, uh, Dr. Samani Hanun. Uh, thank you, and I'm uh, happy to join this uh, special episode on uh, uh, economic uh, position in Sudan today. Thanks, Engineer Bahraz, and also a special greeting to the viewers around the world who are watching this uh, special episode on Dialogue Horizon. Okay, Professor, let us start first. From the beginning, we start. We enlighten the viewers, and most of the viewers, even those who are, who are uh, elite or who are, who are uh, who are educated, they said they lack some of, of the terminology of the, of the economic. First, let us start by defining, please defining in simple ways what is macroeconomics and what is microeconomics. Uh, thanks for this conceptual uh, question. So as a uh, uh, beginning for this uh, special episode, uh, the term economics is uh, short, uh, def de shortly defined as that science which you concern with the management of resources to meet unlimited wants of society and sometimes defined as science of alternative because in economics you have wide range of alternative no single solution and in economics there are so many alternatives that among which you can pick the right alternative to meet the requirement of the situation Macro and microeconomics are two main branches of economics. Macroeconomics, this is an economic deal with the aggregate, deal with the investment, with consumption, with inflation, with the exchange rate, with the budget, with the monetary policy. So they deal with the aggregates in the economy. This is a macro. Yeah, this is a macroeconomy and especially uh, managed by monetary and fiscal policies. Monetary policy designed by, minister, uh, by uh, bank, central bank and uh, uh, the fiscal policy designed by Ministry of Finance. Both of them, they manage the macro economy. Right. Microeconomics, this branch mainly rely on the markets, on the price systems in the economy, and the small institutions in the economy. So there are uh, a big difference between macro like, that deal with the government levels and microeconomics at market levels. In economics, we deal with uh, uh, these branches in the economics, and we uh, focus on management of the economics. Monetary policy is the management of money supply and interest rate by central bank, while the fiscal policy is the management of the public revenues and expenses by Minister of Finance. Both of them, they work in harmony to achieve the strategic goal of the economic policy. And the economic policy mainly target stability in the economy, the economic growth, the, uh, the, 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 the best utilizations of the resources and the, the, the macroeconomic objectives. So any macro policies mainly target to satisfy the requirements of the uh, economic policy in the economy. That, that, that is very clear. That's very good. This is now, now, now at least uh, many people are now aware of the difference between micro and micro. But what concerns 
nations is the macro. Macro, because yeah. Macro, I think macro it has some relation yeah. with, the inter with, with the with the outside external uh, markets and, and economic uh, economies Definitely. like exports and yeah. imports. Macroeconomics, one of the main founder of this school of thought, John Merrill Keynes. Merrill Keynes, who contributed during 1930 during the Great Recessions in the U.S. He uh, presented very valuable and constructive theories on how to recover the economy. So the aggregate economy uh, influenced the life of the people influence politics, influence the different aggregates in the economy, investment, consumption, inflation, exchange. This is why most people are involved by way or another in macroeconomics. Macro. And macroeconomics is the most important and vital for the health of the nations and the uh, country as well. You said aggregate, is the same aggregate, the Ag same macro, the aggregate? Yeah, aggregate that means macro. Ah, aggregate economy, yeah. yes. In Arabic, they, sometimes they say it also like this. Yeah. Aggregate or the macroeconomics, which, which is the, the, the important thing. The importance, yeah, which, for people, especially here in case of Sudan. And it, you said it is the role of the Minister of Finance yeah. and Central Bank. Central Bank. Yeah. Central Bank, the monetary policies yeah. and the uh, government uh, fiscal uh, policy. Fiscal policy. Yeah, fiscal policy, policies of revenues. How yeah. to collect the revenues. Management of public revenues and expenditure. And in expenditure. The, yeah. the fiscal. Yeah. Okay. It's now things, things, things are clear. Even to me, it's clear. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay, Doctor Samani Hanun, or Professor Samani Hanun. Now let us go directly to the question of Sudan. Yeah. The Ministry of finance and economics of Sudan, they said that the, the, the budget of 2022 yeah. will be entirely dependent on the local Resource. resources. Yeah. To what extent do you realize this dependence on local resources, which means without any help from any outsider, will it work? Uh, it is a big challenge, especially uh, during this time, which he considered as the time of uh, the tightness, and especially the economic tightness in Sudan is magnified uh, during the few last months from October and up to now. Heavily or entirely rely on local resources represent big challenge. The government either to go to bring more currencies in the economy and at the end of the day will increase inflation in the economy and deteriorate the standard of living of masses of Sudanese. This is a negative result. And as other, alternatively, the government can impose more taxes. More taxes on the production will harm the producer, definitely. Yes. And that also will uh, 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 decline the total production in the economy and will influence the GDP in the economy and also worsen the standard of living of the people. Yes. Uh, in both cases, the government will increase inflation in the economy. And that will create very tight economic conditions because the uh, positions or especially the standard of living of masses of Sudanese people will be worsened, will be deteriorated as a result of increasing prices in market. So people will fail to access even the basic needs and the necessities mm -hmm. like food, uh, education, health, shelter. They can fail to access these basic needs. So that will magnify uh, the uh, uh, suffering of the peoples and at the end of the day will lead to the more nutrition and famine and sometimes maybe starvation in the country. So the policies, the government has no enough alternative. So my advice is to the government should think uh, through investment. I think the government should put more money in joint stock companies in order to back them and to uh, increase export to the outside. The government should invest in river transport, for, for instance. Government can act as investor, not as a tax uh, lever or co tax collector. That will serve the uh, interests of the government better than the current position. The Sudanese people failed even to maintain the basic need, how they can pay taxes. They don't have enough money. They are poor because people, because of your policies, poor. People fail to pay taxes because they are poor. From where they get the money in order to pay taxes. Pay taxes. So you can destroy the economy by this uh, very aggressive decision to increase taxes. And as you know, taxes on the direct uh, production on the direct uh, the ta direct taxes direct taxes that means imposed on production 
so the production will go down once the production once production decline the total GDP, uh, gdp in the economy will decline as well so again you are in the vicious circle the vicious circle. <laughs> yeah. okay okay doctor somebody uh, it is very important to 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 know to have your your views on a very important element which is which is what is the efficacy or effectiveness of the, 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 the emergency programs. Now, all governments, they resort to emergency programs. Emergency to programs which, mo in most cases, depend completely on security measures. Yeah. What, what will be the, uh, the way out of this, of this uh, crisis? Now we are heading, we are heading to, to, to a collapse. Yeah. I mentioned in several interviews that security solution cannot match the requirement of economic problem. Economic problem should be solved through economic policies. This is a must. So any development for security will be temporal, will not result in the ultimate objective or goal of policies. If we were planning to recover the economy or to improve the economic position, we have to think economically. We have to think through economic perspective. We have to go through economic policies. So let us take the examples of the fuel price liberalization in the economy. When smuggling increase in the economy and people tend to send the, uh, the, uh, the, the oil to the neighboring country, mm -hmm. the government liberalizes the prices. So once prices liberalize, we stop smuggling. So we solve a uh, security problem by economic policies, not by the same uh, security policy. Strategically, yes. if we were planning to solve the economic tightness today, we have to go deeper in economic dialogue. We have to hire the scholars in economics. We have to develop ideas and alternatives, as I defined in the beginning. Economics is the science of alternative. We have range of solutions in order to solve the economic tightness today. As far we are living in a very rich country with huge resources, but we lack ideas. And this is the most important. We don't have innovative ideas to address the economic problem, yeah. that is the core problem behind failure of the government. Management of macroeconomics is not an easy mission. It involves wide range of skills and a special way of thinking and it, it need talent people to lead the uh, uh, planning and also the monitoring of policies and to ensure that the policies realize the strategic goals. So unless we go through this path, we wouldn't solve the problem. The problem cannot be solved through security. The only way we have to sit down and to develop economic dialogue in order to address the monetary and the monetary. fiscal policies and then we co define the combination that will address the problem and make total solution for this inherited economic tightness. Okay. Having, say, having said inherited, that's my next question. You said inherited. Yeah. Inherited from the Austrian regime. Yeah. Okay. So I want to have your idea and views about the performance of the Austrian regime in, in, in macroeconomics. Yeah. namely by abandoning or by neglecting or by not feeding okay. the uh, government institutions in agriculture in, in transport uh, and, until it collapsed yeah. you have you have the jadira you have the yeah. solar Railroad, you have yeah, online you have all, all of this yeah. so what 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 is the effect of the OCD regime policies on the macroeconomics yeah, the hottest regime, the old collapse regime of al -Inqas, it has a very long history in the government. And uh, once the, uh, the system was collapsed, left culture and left behind economic profoundly, uh, uh, the, uh, uh, in the, uh, eco the economic life uh, profoundly affected by the corruption, by sa sanctions, uh, the outside sanction. The, the impact, it is a long-term impact, is still available in the economy and it, it takes time to be recovered. So the, the collapse regime of al inqas uh, 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 or the current uh, government inherited this uh, very deteriorated economic position through the Hamdok government and now today also we are suffering from this long-term impact. Most important, the corruption. Corruption in the 
business through privatizations of the public companies and the government company transfer to the private ownership. Yep. So that is through corrupt ways, not to serve the interests. The main objective of privatization to increase efficiency of the economy. Unfortunately, the Inqaz regime will privatize the economy. They increase the inefficiency in the economy. And that is actually a fabulous result or the damaging result to the economy. And also the second uh, 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 reason, the sanctions, American sanctions mm -hmm. on the business. They make substantial drop on export to the outside and especially uh, stop exports of the, uh, the joint stock companies that are owned by the government, like Sudan Cotton, the Sudan Oil Seeds, the uh, Gam Arabic, are a few examples of the government companies that totally destroyed as a result of sanctions. So these are two macroeconomic factors that influence the position and inherited from the old regime. And still now we fail to make total solution for these two inherited problem. The economists should work hard in order to develop a new model. That model purely rely on economic policies. That we have to uh, accept the, uh, the, the, the philosophy, the economic philosophy, let us say the free market, and let us develop monetary and fiscal policies that heavily rely on free market, that is supply and demand. And also, we, most importantly, we have to pay attention to the accompanying program or the package of the program that reduce the burden of uh, uh, the uh, liberalizations on the poor pe uh, people because you have to subsidize the poor people while you are liberalizing the prices. You need also to subsidize the vulnerable groups in the society. So the, uh, the, 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 the planner, they have to develop this uh, sub, uh, auxiliary program in order to reduce uh, the negative impact of liberalizations on the poor classes in society. Oh, this is what is uh, neglected by government. They but don't also, also, Dr. Samani Hanun, yeah. some people, some critics, some analysts, and some critics, they also blame the hostage regime that it gave way or it, it, it helped or enforced or bolstered the activities of the military economic uh, section at the expense of the government or the public public sector uh, institutions now everyone knows that the the military institutions are strong they are strong but uh, nobody objects the involvement of the military on certain and certain certain sectors, industry uh, yeah. sectors especially industry yeah. they, they are the best in the industry not only because when you talk about uh, arms yeah. industry Definitely, it is accompanied by some other, yeah. other, uh, other small companies that, that okay can be tolerated. Yeah. But to go and to compete like in Gum Arabic yeah. and other, so what, what, what do, do you agree yeah, that? Yeah, I mentioned several times we do agree that the military forces can involve in the uh, productions of the goods with military nature. But I think they don't have right to involve in the productions of goods that's of civil nature, like Gum Arabic, like livestock, like these are civil. Pro, uh, 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 goods, uh, civil uh, commodities should be produced by the private sector, by the civil private sector. Yes. So the control of the economy by this uh, uh, Ghent institution can in uh, reduce the pie of the private sectors in the economy and also lead to unequal competition between the uh, security institutions and the private sectors in the economy. So finally, we'll create distorted uh, private sectors in the economy. Very poor private sectors that cannot compete with the gain, this uh, a very large uh, security institution. If we were planning to recover the economy, we need to retract the resources of the security forces to the uh, ministries like Minister of Finance, the Ministry of Commerce and alike in order to be just specialized in producing the goods with military nature. That is part of the security uh, forces. But other products like civil products should go to the civil uh, ministries, to the civil or to the private sector. So that will create some sort of balance in the market and also will enhance efficiency in the uh, private sectors and develop the, give more chances to uh, private sector to grow in the economy. So I think through this strategy... This is, this yeah. is, this is similar maybe, just to remind you, yeah. similar to maybe, maybe the Egyptian experience, the Egyptian the army, yeah. they, have, they, have, they have big giant industries, but still they have a strong private sector. Yeah, both of them. In, uh, the Egyptian are somewhat different. They have a very strong institution in Egypt. The institutions are so strong. But during the collapse system of Al-Inqas, 
the people they relax the responsibility of the public institutions mm -hmm. and you know privatization was uh, done through very corrupt ways so they uh, make distortions in the institution structure in the city but sometimes you find some entire institution controlled by individuals not like egypt that also neglects the position in the economy. We talk about an institution. Sounding an institution in the economy can serve the interest of all people, yeah. while individuals they serve the interests of specific sectors in the economy. So that also contradiction will create and complicate the matter. The position in Sudan, the structure of an institution, the security forces are somewhat different from Egypt. So the background are not the same like Egypt. Egypt is a well-established uh, institutions and with a well-articulated vision, they work <coughs> to serve the interest of all uh, the Egyptian people. But here we have exceptional positions in Sudan. So if we were planned to recover the positions and to make very powerful institutions that serve the military service and civil service simultaneously, we need to reform the structures of this institution in order to serve the interest of the nation the interest of the country, not a specific sector. This sectarian uh, institution will not satisfy the objective of the nation. If we are plan to make uh, a strategic goal for all Sudanese people, so we have to create unite armed forces for all Sudanese people. That forces will work on the, secu on the, uh, the, the security products, so security uh, uh, commodities rather than uh, the uh, civil pro uh, commodities. Civil commodities should go to the private sector, to the uh, civil uh, institution. I think by reforming this institution and through dialogue, we can reform this institution in order to serve the interests of the Sudanese people. I think, I think, this, yeah. I, I, if, I, if you are saying this, with you. I, yeah. I think as if you are saying that we, we, we have all the, 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 the leaders or the rulers, they have to draw a demarcation line yeah. between what can be done by the military and what can be done by the civilian. This is very important. Yeah. Now the, 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 it seems that it seems that the military the the, the trust uh, that they, they, they went through to the uh, domain of the of the of the of the civilian uh, industries and even to commerce yeah i think during the last week i hear very favorable uh, news from the military leaders when they decided to withdraw from the political life i think this is a rational thinking and always we consider leaders especially in this institution to think rationally without uh, inter, inter, yeah, interventions of the civil. They, they are themselves, they have to study the global, the regional, they see the interests of the nations and make a strategic roadmap to development of the security forces in Sudan. So when they decided to withdraw from the political life, I think this is will meet one part of the slogans of the national interest of the people. Also in the business side, before any government talk about what is civil and what is military, the military leaders themselves, they have to sit down and to make decisions to transfer what's civil to the civil government, like uh, say, uh, civil ministries like Minister of Finance, Ministry of the Commerce, and remain with what exclusively produced by the military uh, uh, side. And this is, can be done by the leaders themselves. So I think there is a development and there is a rational way of thinking that will serve the interest of the country, yeah. the interest of the nation. The nation. We, we avoid any violence. We can stop any normal or contradictions in the, whether in economics or in the politics. Of, well, both of them yeah. will work to serve the interest of the country. Okay, I think this reminded me that they're very important. I think the, the, the debate of last week, which was held at the, at the High Academy, Literary the Academy, Academy, the yeah. Academy, I think it is a landmark. Yeah. Landmark in the history of Sudan, yeah. for the first time, the military, not, not uh, emotionally yeah. or uh, sentimentally, yeah. they decided after deliberations, yeah. they came out with a recommendation that the army or the ground forces should withdraw, from withdraw completely from the political arena. Yeah. This is for the civilians. Yeah. To, this is a landmark. Yeah. I hope yes. the civilians will pick up this, yes. this, this, this uh, landmark yeah. and come together ah, yes. in a consensus, a minimum, with, with, a, minimum, with a minimum level yeah. of acceptance, of yes. consensus, yeah. so that we can circumvent 
Yes. An eminent, eminent change. Yeah. Catastrophic change. Okay, okay, Dr. Samai, this is very yeah, good. Yeah. And uh, we have to commend yes. the, the military on there, the academy, the military academy, the debatable academy, the, uh, uh, the military yeah. academy. So it, this is what I describe it as a favorable news I received it's last a new, week. It's a new, a new, a new... A new trend in new among trend. the leaders. Positive. So, yeah, and this is, I think, one of the very favorable decisions and uh, recommendation by the workshop. So they mentioned that the, uh, uh, the armed forces should withdraw from the political arena, as you mentioned, and also we need to take similar decisions on economic also. You have to sit together and to see what should go to the military and what should go to the civil, and they can take the decision. So that, I think, will, will pave the way and, uh, for uh, uh, future co cooperation between civil and the military uh, forces in Sudan and um, also will create what we call conducive environment for uh, a national concerns. Uh, people they can meet once uh, the security forces they take this is strategic decision the civilians should go in the same direction they sh you should unite should consider the role of the security forces in any state, uh, whether civil or military, you cannot ignore the role of the security forces. So you, within this environment, within this uh, climate, people can share dialogue and they can exclude their, they express their opinions and they can get the common, uh, common ground that for both military and service and we can stop uh, this zero sum equations uh, military against uh, civils and just we uh, all Sudanese we have to work together we have to unite this all in institution work to serve the Sudanese uh, uh, people irrespective of whether civil or uh, military I think this is a strategic decision and will serve the interest of the national consensus among Sudanese people in the future. Okay, let us go just to another, another issue uh, in, this, in this direction. A yeah. um, few days ago, I think, in the export forum, export uh, debate or forum, some they suggested that one of the reasons, they say that one of the reasons for the, 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 the poor performance of the export is the absence of the commercial attaches at the embassies of Sudan outside mm -hmm. so that they can promote yeah. and help in, 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 in marketing the Sudanese products. To what extent do you agree with this uh, statement? Uh, definitely I am not 100% agree with the uh, arguments but I think that the existence of the uh, economic counselor in any embassy outside will contribute uh, substantially to the balance of trade among the different uh, nations and among different countries. And needless to repeat that balance of trade is the most important indicator of relation between nations. So most of people, they study the balance of trade whether in favor of or against. Or again. If you check and examine the case of Sudan, probably you will find most of cases the balance of trade against Sudan move in favor of other nations. So you need the economic counselor, that qualified economic counselor, who work actively in different embassies of Sudan outside in order to boost the economic relation and also to attract foreign direct investment to the country to uh, uh, sample the, 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 the rich resources of Sudan in uh, the world wide. So existence of the economic counselors in different embassies in Sudan can contribute to uh, improve the positions of the de deteriorated balance of trade with the nations outside. So we need highly qualified cadre, not ideologized cadre, but we want highly qualified economists in different embassies work with the strategy in order to increase the trade relations with the new nations outside. Those uh, embassies or uh, consulate contribute to the improve foreign direct investment to the country, increase production in the economy, they improve GDP in the economy. So embassies, by way or another, contribute to the welfare of the people through the qualified, uh, the, 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 the economic counselor working outside, outside. the country. Yeah. Okay, but, 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 but uh, this, uh, Dr. Zamani Hanun, this has to, to, to be really a, 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 a real need when we have abundance in products. Now we have low products 
a low productivity, low production and low productivity. Yeah. Things, fair, fair, we have to improve. Yeah. Because uh, you, you cannot promote for something which you don't have. But those attaches or councils, they can play a role of enlightening the private sector in their embassies outside about the prospects and future of Sudan, where they can tell them about the areas where they can, where, where we have the raw material, we have the resources. Oh. Do you agree with me that this uh, should be the role also? Yeah, definitely. They have to work, <coughs> oh, sorry, to transfer knowledge <coughs> and technical know-how from abroad to the local people. Yes. <coughs> oh, sorry. So the, the, the councillor can play very strategic role to increase productivity in the economy. Yes. through a, a transferring knowledge from outside to the local producer here. Yes. And I think there are three fundamental steps for development. One thing, the ethics, the moral, that most important people should commit to high moral in order to develop their nation, in order to be committed to the welfare of the nation, to appreciate the public interest. This is number one. Commitment to the ethics and moral is important for development. Number two, the knowledge, the technical knowledge, technical know-how through education. People should know how to exercise and to practice uh, agriculture and how to increase the productivity per fadan in the uh, uh, agricultural projects and schemes in different countries. Mm -hmm. And number three, commitment to the work. People, they have to work for a long time in order to realize the development in any sector, whether agricultural or industrial or service sectors. The councillor can transfer the knowledge of the nations around the world. Let us take the examples of the agriculture in Brazil. They can transfer from there to Sudan in order to increase productivity of ground nets or to increase the productivity of hypescus. So the councillor contributes substantially, but I am talking about the quali qualified uh, councillor, not the ideologized councillor who works as a, a political leader. Or corrupt councillor. Or corrupt uh, co uh, councillor. The, the, the direct, the direct Yeah, lead. yeah, that harm the mm. state. And this is actually what happens, substantial drop in balance of trade. In the foreign, the Ministry of Foreign should be accounted for drop in uh, the a balance of trade of Sudan. Minister of Finance should play a greater role to improve the balance of trade through councillor outside because we pay in dollars to them yes. in order to do the job. So they are also required. We are not talking about only the military. Other components, civil, they also they have to perform well in order to build the economy and the nation as well. Okay. Yeah. Let me ask you a question. Now it reminds you a question. Right in your domain, yeah. right inside it. Yeah. Tell us about, we used to have three big companies, public yeah. companies. Yes. Three companies, they took the owners of the whole economy of the country yeah. for quite a long time, before, before oil and even after oil yeah. exploration. Yes. These are the cotton company, yes. gum arabic yes. and oil seeds. Yeah. Uh, as people may remember that, we used to export oil. Yeah. We used to have big, big, big plants like Sheikh Mustafa al yeah. They have a vessel. Yes. They, they, it is connected by pipes in yeah. Port Sudan, yeah. direct to the ship, and they take, they export it. Yeah. Now we have a deficit, import. and we import, yes. and we have low quality oil. Uh, can you tell us about these three companies uh, with see, emphasis yeah. on the oil? One seeds. of the main reason and a structural reason behind the slowdown in the economy the corrupt privatization of this joint stock company, which I mean about 10 government companies. These are including Sudan Cotton, Sudan Oil Seeds, Gum Arabic, Red Sea, the Life of Stock Company, the uh, about 10 largest company that dominate the economy in the past history. Mm -hmm. They play very important role let us talk about the cotton, which was owned by Lancashire Company in UK, which was described as the largest company in terms of capital in the world during that time. Mm. Talk about Sudan oil seeds. Sudan oil seeds, one of the gains in Africa, 
with demonstrated achievement, Sudan oil seed used to export about six million dollars every year. This is the international market. Million or billion? Million. Mm. During the 80s and uh, early 90s. Okay. Sudan oil seed received about 10 prices, golden prices, in Europe, in Madrid, in different parts of Europe, excellence in market. So the quality of the... Yeah, because of commitment to the quality. Okay. And Sudan oil seed on oil certificate, an international uh, quality certificate that can enhance producer to export to the any stock market in the world. Sudan oil seed, one of the founders of the African unions of the oil seeds in, uh, during early uh, 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 history. Sudan oil seeds uh, is still now, it has own seaport in Europe. One of the largest and gained company now totally collapsed. And the, because of corruption, because of uh, the uneven uh, privatizations of this company, this gain company totally collapsed now. This is why the government facing big challenge to avail the foreign uh, dollars in market. So this company used to export and to collect proceeds of dollar to be injected to the treasury of central bank. So they increase the supply of dollars in market and they stop fluctuations in foreign exchange uh, market which you control 100% today by the private speculators in market. Mm. It was fully controlled by these companies, these great companies, Cotton, Sudan Cotton, Sudan Oil Seeds, the Sudan Life Stock, Sudan Gum Arabic. These are important to the economy. They were public companies. Public company, yeah. For, uh, work for the interest of the Sudanese, Sudanese people. people. So we have to recover this company. And in the last meeting with the Minister of Finance, I expressed to him that companies are very important to the recovery of the economy and even to initiate and accelerate economic development in Sudan. We need to recover the joint stock company and we need to build the company on a new, uh, to build the Sudan on new basis, mm -hmm. basis of the joint stock company. This is to be culture, to be exercised in the eight state of Sudan, in Darfur, in River Nile, in uh, every part of Sudan, they have to create their own joint stock company in order to accelerate the economic development and at the same time, we can catch pass of the growth in the economy. So joint stock company is a great loss to the Sudanese nation. And we strongly encourage government to support this joint stock company in order to recover the collapsed economy today, to increase the supply of dollars to the central bank, create job for Sudanese use. <coughs> Also, they can produce, uh, let us take examples of Sudan oil seeds, can produce oil at affordable prices to the low-income consumers in the economy. Yeah. And they can compete to reduce the prices. You, needless to repeat that, although we produce huge quantities of oil seeds in Sudan, but still we import about 300,000 ton, 300, tons as uh, uh, oils from our side. And that is very low quality oil to be consumed by Sudanese people. Mm -hmm. So why we, we not stop uh, importing oil and enhance and support these companies in order to uh, uh, meet or satisfy the local demand for uh, uh, oils in Sudan? Yes, so we yes. can uh, yes. get use of this uh, joint o stock company. Oil, and, uh, oil actually is organic, organic oil, but, but uh, with the exception of oil seeds uh, company, which exports final product, not final, uh, final product. What was the relation between the oil seed company and the private sector? We used to have very strong private sector in oil mills. We used to have very colossal, very big oil mills. What yeah. was the relation? What, what was yeah, the, the there role? was a very close relation with the private sector. Although it was has a government concession to export oil seed. They don't but have mills, uh, the, the, the company. The it company. has own mills and also they used to rent the okay. mills of the private uh, sectors okay, in okay. all Sudan in order to produce oil. Uh -huh. Oil and it was main producer of oil in market. So they produce organic oil, high quality oil and affordable prices. They buy, they buy the raw material directly from the farmers? Yeah, or, or, they buy all the uh, uh, ground nuts and uh, the sesame and the sunflower seeds and cotton seeds in Sudan. They buy it directly? They buy it directly yeah, from the market. Okay. And again, they make contract with the 
uh, oil mills, oil mills to produce oil. To produce oil. Through yes. this mechanism, Sudan oil seeds contribute to the oil market yes. and make a more supply to the markets. And they lower prices in Sudan with organic oil, not that uh, very low quality oil imported from outside. But yes, yes, this, is, this is something good in the oil yeah. Oil company, the other company, the other two yeah. companies that say the gum, yeah. gum Arabic and the cotton. And the cotton. They, yeah. did, they, they just they exported as raw. They did not, why they did not think of processing? Like in cotton, they should have built or encouraged building, weaving and spinning uh, factories. And at one time, during the Mary's rule, at one time, business was booming. Yeah. Many private, private weaving and uh, spinning. Uh, factories were, were uh, established by the private sector, mm -hmm. but they went down with the, uh, the, the death, demise of the Yazira cotton. Uh, yeah. So, so do you think that the, the both companies should also, well, if they, if they are revived, um, if they are revitalized, mm -hmm. do you think that it, it, they should think of? Like oil, you think of adding value before export. Yeah, definitely. You know, most of people, they condemn the way to export raw material to the outside world. Yes. And even the use, when they block the uh, lifeline or the uh, north uh, streets, people again is uh, exporting uh, raw materials to the outside world. That create a lot of uh, economic distortions. Including livestock. Uh, li livestock and cotton and all the... Uh, 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 goods in primary position are strictly prohibited to be exported to the outside because some people uh, um, um, uh, probably they use it and export it in the name of that nation and that will harm your competition in the long run so processing industry the must for Sudan this is for cotton product for livestock for uh, 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 oils uh, seeds gum for gum Arabic for all products we have to make a process industry in order to export this good in the finished uh, uh, form not in the primary form primary but, form but not necessarily governmental private, private sector yeah private sector you started by by this dialogue we yeah. started by giving the private sector more, more power uh, yeah more power yeah i from the beginning in order to uh, at least to relax the bottleneck in the economy okay. i advise uh, uh, Minister of Finance to share the private sector, mm -hmm. give more freedom and role to the private and sectors, help, and, help, and help the private sector through facilities, not to pay money, no. Mm. Give just guarantees or warranty from Minister of Finance. They can get money through this letter. Yes. No need to pay physical money. Yes. So government provide yeah. only guarantee to the people, and the private sector will lead the initiative. Yes. The joint stock company, I request it to him this is ideal form of business come a private come public both of them they join one company like for example life of stock come like uh, the uh, oil seeds company the cotton company sudan cotton company the gum arabic there is a, a partial ownership of uh, private sector so we can develop this form of uh, ownership with the government uh, in order to stop corruption in the business and increase efficiency in the business. And finally, <coughs> the Minister of Finance not to be tax collector, which is very important, not to uh, uh, harm the people with more taxes, excessive taxes. Mm. Excessive taxes harm to the production. I ask him to transfer into investors through joint stock company, you can solve the problem. This is although, and I think this is a good opportunity. Challenges create opportunity. In Sudan today, the Minister of Finance facing a practical challenge. Yeah. So they have to transfer challenge into opportunity. Through this mechanism, they can establish a stock and they can help meeting or conference for this joint stock company in order to lead the development in country and yeah. to give more support. Yeah, this is very important because uh, now it reminds me yeah. from what we see now, the pictures, they come Arabic. Yeah. Gum Arabic, they tell me that the gap is very big between the raw gum Arabic and when it is processed, the price goes up dramatically. Yeah. It is different. Like, like yes. for example, some people, they say, yeah. we export the ton of raw gum Arabic. Yeah. We, we, we export it at, let us say, a ton for $1,000, $3,000. Yeah. But if it is processed by 
by by minor minor involvement of machineries yeah. uh, the price goes up to 10 15 or yes double double so well, this is why we recommend to increase the proceeds of company already you have the raw materials mm. you need just a very simple technology in order to process the gum arabic the gum so arabic. that will double the value of the gum arabic in international market and also will open new market for you so don't mm. export raw materials. Some people, they try to justify other countries like Australia or where they export raw materials. But in case of Sudan, you know, this is very sensitive for Sudan. Sudan is a very fragile state. Other people, they can uh, absorb all the resources. They can take the resources and they are used under the title made in that country. So that will harm the economy. The, at the end. They export, they export the uh, uh, gum Arabic and they don't grow it. N yes, and they don't grow. And they mentioned in the, uh, the ingredients of the uh, product it is uh, produced by that state. <laughs> Something uh, uh, very funny, actually. From where they get the gum Arabic, which is, uh, uh, has mon natural monopoly. It cannot be produced in uh, uh, an area with a climate, especially in Sudan. It cannot be grown even in Nigeria or in Chad. They only produce about a 5%. Very, a very narrow belt. Yeah, this is natural monopoly. Nobody can violate the divine right. <laughs> Yeah. But, but people, they, 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 they import it, they add something and they sell it as their own uh, resource. Yeah, they use as uh, their own resources and even the logo and the ingredient uh, written on the back or on the product doesn't mention Sudan in any position. They just mentioned this made is made in by X, made X or in Y. X, X yeah. and y. <laughs> That is something actually very absurd. Funny. Yeah. absurd. This mm -hmm. is some time of economic crisis. Very, very bad. Yeah. Okay, b b Professor, let us go to uh, also another important important issue about the relation with the International Monetary Fund (IMF) and the World Bank about the subsidies. Do you think that the recipe? Now we tried the recipe, and still we are we are we are we are, we are people started suffering because it's the package uh, double-sided. The, 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 the government implemented the, the first side, but the other side of observing or looking for those affected by the subsidies. Tell us about subsidies, your own views uh, on yeah, subsidies. Yeah, subsidy, I think one of the auxiliary program that should accompany the liberalization policy in the economy in order to lower the burden of liberalization and increasing of prices in market. So subsidy, target the vulnerable group, people with low income, yes. in order to improve the standard of living, not to be worsened yes. by the liberalization policy. So this is a well-articulated and defined program designed whether by IMF and the World Bank and even the government in order to reduce the negative impact of liberalizations on the poor uh, group of the society. Subsidy is important in order to have a sounding liberalization policies without political protest. People always uprise against austerity program. Yes. When IMF launch any program in order to liberalize prices in the economy, people tend to protest because of inflation, because of increasing costs, because of deteriorated standard of living for people. So in order to avoid any political congestions or protection by the peoples of that country, you need to uh, make this uh, 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 program, subsidy program, in order to lower the negative impact of uh, uh, the restructuring of the economy. And people, they, uh, at the end of the day, they will hunt the benefit of the liberalization policy. Still now, we don't talk about liberalization of trade, which is very important. We need also to liberalize trade because to give freedom to the private sector in order to do the business. And you have to lower restrictions on trade with the minimum barriers. Barriers in Sudan, increasing poverty among people. You, can get, you can't get any license for any project or you have to pay double in order to get the license. Right. So lowering the restrictions on trade is the importance that will increase the investment by private sectors in the economy, create job for job seekers, increase production and export to the outside. Government will act as a legal body and controller only, not to involve in production. Okay, okay, yeah. Dr. Uh, Professor Samani Hanun, uh, we are very thankful for this useful information about these important issues. Welcome, uh, uh, dear viewers, or two with me, we welcome uh, Professor Samani. Thank you, dear viewers, for being with us in the last 
hour or so. We hope to see you next week in a different issue, hopefully something good about the economy of the country. Thank you and bye.